Thank you, Jen. Our third story is Hashtag True Beauty by Jason Jackson. Just in the last week, Jason Jackson has won the second prize in the prestigious Exeter short story competition with his story, Selling Fans in Halliburton. I think that deserves an end of the Jason lives in Kingswood in South Gloucestershire. His work has been performed in Bristol and London and New York and Hong Kong, but not in Munich. Not only has Jason never read at Stroud short stories before, he's never actually been to Stroud before this evening. Uh, but he's here now? Yes, he is. So please welcome Jason Jackson to read hashtag. Hashtag True Beauty. My name's Jay and I'm a photographer. Well, that's what I've always wanted to be. What I really am is unemployed, 36 years old and skint. There's not much I can do about the 36, but a single, but well, the rest is about to change. Because six weeks ago, I had an idea. Like all great ideas, it's simple. I take Polaroids of people in the street and then I give them a photograph. I also do one more thing, but perhaps I need to go back to the beginning to explain. My uh, girlfriend, sorry, ex-girlfriend gave me the idea. And actually, considering the whole lawsuit thing, I rephrase that. She did three things which somehow coincided to give me the idea. You see how I'm framing it? That's how my lawyer puts it. It's all about how we frame it, he says. I laughed at first. I thought it was a photography joke, frame. Yeah. Sounds like lawyers don't joke. <laughs> Anyway, for my birthday, Marie got me a, an original Polaroid camera. I had one when I was younger and I loved the thing, but I threw it in the sea one night in my mid-twenties when the impossibility of making it as a photographer was hitting home. I had other cameras by then, but letting the waves take it was uh, symbolic. The next day, I enrolled on a teacher training course and I didn't take another photograph for 10 years. So this new Polaroid camera was such a cool present because Marie had been there when the original had hit the water. Childhood sweetheart, you see. Ah. Oh. What made it even better was the note she'd attached to the present back in the game. You see, I'd resigned from teaching. I was going back to photography. And this time no one was going to throw anything into the sea. I'd been telling myself that I wasn't 36. I was only 36. See, I'm afraid of that. And that I had the rest of my life in front of me. I'd already chatted to Marie's brother, a web designer, about some ideas for the site that I was going to name. Wedding photography. Now, it's not exactly William Eggleston, but I'll tell you what else it isn't. It isn't year 11 on a wet Wednesday in February, and it isn't break duty, and it isn't marking essays till midnight. Anyway, it was all about them keeping the money coming in. What I was really going to do was street photography. I blanked some gallery space through a contact from uni days, and I was going to have an exhibition. I was going to sell some prints. And of course, I was going to get a contract to shoot for a magazine, Vice, or maybe something bigger. All I needed to do was take some pictures. I got myself a camera on a credit card, of course, but the Polaroid was a cool present. I really was back in the game. The night I had my big idea, Marie was getting dressed to go out. She was telling me something she'd heard about at work. A bloke going round drawing pictures surreptitiously of people on a tube. 
He only let the person know they'd been sketched when he handed them the drawing as he jumped off the train. And by all accounts, they were brilliant. No one know, knew who the bloke was. And it caused quite a stir. You can see where this is going, right? Substitute Polaroid for sketch. And there's your idea. But no. It was what happened next that made the whole thing click. Marie was in front of the mirror. She was about to put on her makeup and I was holding the camera. She turned her head towards me and I instinctively pressed the button. When the image popped out of the slot, I shook it a little and I handled it at arm's length. It was a shot in a million. Marie is a good looking girl, but there was something about her face, no makeup, totally natural. Her smile, sudden and real. They made the image absolutely captivating. Christ, she said, that's good. Did you buy me a magic camera? I said, we both want hot, but that, let me have it a second. She passed me the photograph and I took a pen from the bedside cabinet and in the white strip underneath the image, I wrote hashtag true beauty and I handed it back. She laughed, well, it's a damn sight better than hashtag selfie, she said. And that was it. Simple. The next day was Saturday, and I went into town with a camera. I took over 75 shots. Each one was someone caught unaware, smiling, natural, beautiful. Under each image, I wrote, hashtag, true beauty, and I smiled as I handed it over. When I got back home, I switched on the computer, and over half of the people had uploaded the photographs of their Polaroids into the thread. Over the next week, I took 300 more photographs with the Polaroid. I went out in the morning, in the evening, I checked online and, uh, every night, and by the end of the week, hashtag true beauty was trending on social media. It was the anonymity that did it. Yes, the photographs were good. I really do think that that Polaroid is, is a magic camera, but it's the handing it over and running away that really gets people interested. Marie thought it was great. She kept looking at the thread as more and more people uploaded their photos of the shots that I'd taken. By the third week, I noticed the images selling online. Someone asked a hundred pounds for one and got it. So I started playing around a little. It's amazing what a different colour pen can do. Images with hashtag true beauty written in blue instead of black suddenly became collector's items. And a tenor did one morning in red. Someone put one on eBay, four figure sum. One evening, Marie was opening a bottle of wine and she said, how come all of these people are making money out of our photographs and you just keep giving them away? <laughs> now there were two things which concerned me about what she said. Mainly, it was her poor business sense. She didn't realize that the photographs were only worth that amount of money precisely because I was giving them away. And as long as I kept giving them away, feeding were not saturate in the market, then the price would keep going up. When I did choose to avail myself, then I'd be in the optimum position to cash in. So yes, a bad business sense, which set me. But what was much worse was a pronoun usage. <laughs> They're not our photos, I said. I'd say them, not you. But I bought you the camera. I give you the hashtag idea. Uh, yes to the camera. No, no, no to give me the idea. I said. I'm going to draw a veil over the rest of the conversation. Suffice to say, we didn't get to drink the wine. In the week following the argument, three different magazines, including Vice, ran the story of the hashtag True Beauty photographs. There was a half hour local news special, many interviews with the subjects of the photos, some talking heads banging on about this new development in what they called street portraiture. Suddenly it looked like there might actually be some money in hashtag true beauty after all. It's strange how in relationships you always think the time spent together is like a flood defence for when the rains come. Those hours you put in watching each other's favourite television programmes, biting your lip when you have to go out as a couple, 
with people only one of you likes. <laughs> it's insurance to get you through the bad times, right? And not when there's money at stake. I told her I didn't care about the money. I cared about my intellectual property. She said I was a liar. And if I wasn't a liar, I was pretentious. And an idiot as well. Those flood defences got breached pretty quickly. And now there's a lawsuit. Lawyers claim, counter claim. Because last week, I announced on the thread, my first and my last post, that I would be staging an exhibition of 30 new hashtag true beauty photographs. The last ones that I would ever take. And if you wanted to be one of those faces in the frame, then you had to turn up to the gallery. It's blank walls, ready and waiting for the pictures to be hung. And you had to bid for the opportunity to have your photograph taken. I'll make a killing just on that. Then I'm going to ex exhibit them for a week and then I'm going to auction them off. Like I said, a similar idea. My idea. I don't feel guilty. I've got nothing to feel guilty about. And that first hashtag true beauty shot I took with Marie, she ripped it into tiny pieces and she threw them at me. Shame. Would have been worth a fortune 